Garrus is awesome. Pretty simple and that's probably why you voted him as the character that we do a lore video on next, beating out Tally, Miranda, Rex and a score of others. So shall we begin? Can it wait for a bit? I'm in the middle of some calibrations. Sorry Garrus, but we are doing this. Hi, this is Rima from Emmy Odyssey and today I get the honour of talking about everyone's favourite Turian, Garrus Archangel Vicarian. Garrus could almost be the stereotypical Turian, military raised, self-disciplined and honourable. Born and raised on Palavan, Garrus eventually started military training at the age of 15. He then followed his father's example by joining CSEC. His father being a strict, tough character who would calmly say things like, quote, do things right or don't do them at all. As we're shown in the Homeworlds comic, Garrus' relationship with his father is a lot more tense than with his mother. We're shown that his father strictly trains him, teaching him to snipe and be a good soldier. But his relationship with his mother is much warmer. For example, when his mother was injured, Garrus decided to miss his trip to study abroad to look after her. At this, his mother feels guilty and worried that she cost him his chance to leave Palavin. It's also hinted that his mother suffers from Corpala syndrome and is looked after by his sister Solana, who seems to share the Vicarian charm. Garrus had also been a Spectre candidate, though he humbly claims he would have been one of thousands of Turian candidates. But it was his own father that prevented him from even being considered, mainly because he disliked Spectres because of their actions sometimes going against the law. A hard worker, Garrus excelled in seasick but was idealistic, striving for change unlike much of the older guard, including his father. It's not until Garrus was actually tasked to investigate Saren Arturius prior to the events of Mass Effect 1 that he meets up with Shepard. This is due to Count Sardina's claims that Saren was going rogue, but regardless, Garrus couldn't get past the red tape and sought the opportunity to gain the help of the Spectre Shepard when they meet. Garrus is one of the central characters of Mass Effect, but very little is actually known about his family and his life away from the Normandy. Mass Effect Homeworlds gave us a glimpse of what Garrus was like away from Shepard as a child and how he became the very changed Turian that we meet in Mass Effect 2. The comic chronicles the events between the end of Mass Effect 1 and the start of Mass Effect 2, during the time that Garrus picks up the mantle of Archangel. Directly after Mass Effect 1, Garrus becomes disillusioned about how the public choose to accept what the Council told them about Sovereign and the bureaucracy of CSEC. Quitting, he eventually finds himself on Omega. As soon as he arrives, he manages to intervene to stop a vorture robbing a couple. To this, they thank him and call him, quote, a real-life angel. Then Garrus meets up with other like-minded individuals, including Sedonis, and forms a group, taking the lead as Archangel. Now, we all know how this ended, but in short, the team were actually successful in cleaning up Omega for a short time, eventually leading to a small fortune. Some of the team wanted to use his money to settle down and put down the cause, but Garrus was determined and almost obsessed, pushing his team to continue to fight, maybe even pushing them too much. Eventually, Sedonis was captured and possibly tortured and ends up giving up the rest of the team, which leads them to be ambushed by the Blue Suns and the Blood Pack when Garrus' back is turned. With the discovery that his team was killed, Garrus prepares himself to die, even taking time to contact his father to make amends. And then as the tide changes, he tells his father that he'd be home soon because, quote, the odds just got a whole lot better. Once he actually notices a friendly emblem in the scope, because Shepard has the best timing. Archangel. So because this is Garrus, I thought I'd share some interesting facts about Arturian friend that don't always make it into the main storyline. In regards to his mother's Corpella syndrome, Garrus actually worked with Morden Solis to deliver the Silarian Helos Medical Institute collector tissue that they find in Mass Effect 2 and helps fund the medical trial for patients unbeknownst to his family. Garrus also has a playlist for firefights which includes song titles Die for the Cause, the Turian Imperial Anthem, Fire in the Courtyard, the soundtrack for the Fleet and Flotilla movie, which is also Tally's favourite movie, incidentally, Bang Bang Boom, Hurt Me Deeper by Expel 10, and Blue Azure. There's also the fact that Garrus inscribed the names of all his fallen Omega comrades on his visor, removing Sedonis' name once he actually learned of his betrayal. And finally, the known fact that there is no Shepherd without Vicarian. Oh, 
Garrus. On the surface, the simple Turian squad member, but Garrus Vakarian is much more than that. Determined, headstrong and sentimental, he keeps things close to his chest. But from the Homeworld comic, we learn that Garrus' past is much more complex. Losing a team and nearly his life on multiple occasions, he still ends up pledging himself to Shepard's cause, and being a damn good right hand at that. So we hope you've enjoyed this lore video on Garrus Vakarian. Now I present you guys with another choice, the lore video on Tally that was so closely edged out, or would you prefer us to do something else, for example a location or planet or event in Mass Effect history? Let us know in the comments below. If you like this video please like and subscribe and share this video to help the channel grow. Thank you very much guys, this one has been tremendously fun to do and we hope we will see you next time.